Let's talk about the inflation print, what that means for Fed policy. And we want to bring in Mark Zandi, Moody's Analytics Chief Economist. Mark, it's great to see you there. So certainly some improvement on the inflation print, right around 6.5% from a year ago. Conflicting commentary, though, coming from Fed officials. Bullard, on the one hand, saying that he's arguing for rates above 5% as soon as possible. Then you have the Phillies. Harker saying 25 basis points in his mind makes the most sense. What do you think? Well, I, I'm more sympathetic to what uh, President Harker had to say. I, I mean, I think the inflation numbers today were, were great. Uh, I, I think the job num numbers we got last week were great. I think we've been getting very good economic data now for at least two, maybe three months. Uh, and I think uh, the Fed's done what it needs to do. So maybe a couple, three more rate hikes, 25 basis points each, each time that would put the funds rate target somewhere around 5%, give or take. That feels about right to me, and I, I think the data between now and um, you know the next few Fed meetings will continue to support that. So I, I'm on this on the on, in the Harker camp that this is uh, we're pretty close to the right end of the right hikes at this point. Close to the end of though. Good to see you, Mark. So best case, what's the best part of this report? What's the worst or or stickiest part of the report you saw today? Well, the thing I really liked most about it was a kind of a broad-based uh, uh, slowing in inflation. You know, you saw food price inflation come in. Of course, energy prices declined. You saw declines in uh, vehicle sales, including new vehicle sales. We've been waiting for that for some time. You know, supply chain issues have been the problem there, and they're starting to ease. Airline ticket prices were down. Um, you know, the medical care inflation remained uh, relatively low. The the only blemish, uh, Dave, was uh, in the cost of housing services. You know, that still reflects the very strong rent growth we were getting back at the uh, this time last year. The good news there is that, you know, rents have gone flatline here, are going down in some parts of the country, and that'll start to uh, weigh on the cost of housing services later this year. And we can say that with a high degree of certainty. So, a lot more good news in today's report than, than bad news. Yeah, that shelter number certainly is still significantly high. Mark, when we talk about seeing inflation continuing to ease, it sounds like you're pretty optimistic about that. What do you think is going to be the big driver lower in order to see significant improvement there? Is it all about housing? Well, uh, we got to continue to see uh, oil prices stay roughly where they are, keep gasoline prices down close to $3 a gallon. If, if we do that, diesel prices continue to come in. That, that'll that'll be really important in, in helping bring inflation down on a year-over-year -year basis through the mid part of this year. We're seeing new vehicle prices now uh, head south here pretty quickly. Used vehicle prices are already falling. Uh, that's going and that goes to supply chains and goods prices coming in. That'll help on inflation through the mid part of the year. Second half of the year is all about the cost of housing services. That's going to decelerate. And then of course, to get that last mile to get inflation back to the Fed's target, we need to see the cost of non-housing services, which are labor intensive activities like healthcare and hospitality, you know, that there we need to see some moderation in wage growth uh, and uh, uh, that'll uh, bring inflation in. But I expect fully expect that by, you know, this time uh, next year, I think the labor market's gonna be soft enough, long enough that wage growth will have come in and we'll get inflation back close to target or, or at target by spring, summer of 2024. That's some great news. Got to do something about my bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich, though, Mark. I mean, eggs are up 60%, <laughs> in the last year, up 11 from the prior report. I know there's a lot factored in there, including the bird flu. I do want to talk to you, though, yeah. not about eggs, but about politics. Uh, President Biden spoke about this, mentioning the Inflation Reduction Act, which really had nothing in it to lower inflation. But he said Americans are starting to feel the benefits in their everyday lives. He also said this about the opposition party. Listen. House Republicans campaigned on inflation. They didn't say if elected their plan was to make inflation worse. All right, so Americans are seeing the impact of the Inflation Reduction Act and Republicans' plans would make inflation worse. Either one true? Uh, no, here, the truth is, Dave, inflation is coming in. Uh, lots of good reason for that, and that'll continue to be the case. Uh, you know, the rest of it is just uh, is a bit of noise, uh, po uh, political posturing. So don't think I'd read too much into that, but uh, or anything into it. I mean, but at the bottom line is that inflation, while still painfully high, is uh, moving in the right direction. And all the trend lines suggest that it's going to continue to come in. So by this time next year, I think uh, inflation won't even be a, a topic, uh, you know, top of my topic, certainly not in the in political circles. And of course, there's a, there's a lot of things that need to get done politically between now and then that 
could uh, you know derail the economy, like the debt limit and the, and the passing a new budget to fund the government after this end of this fiscal year. So there's a lot of work to be done. But on the inflation front, regardless of what was going on in Washington and, and all this term and drang, it's coming in, and we're going to feel a lot better about it a year from now. Mark, what does all this mean in terms of the odds of a recession right now? I know you were out earlier this month with a paper saying that you're expecting a slow session, as you call it. Is that still intact? And what exactly does that mean? Yeah, you like that, Shauna? <laughs> it session? was good. Well, I liked it. It caught yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, a little ca catchy. I, you know, I was trying to figure out soft landing just doesn't yeah, feel Yeah, we're right, sick of that right? phrase. I mean, it's not going to be soft. It's going to be uncomfortable. No matter what scenario we're talking about, it's going to be a difficult year. But slow session means, first of all, no recession. Re means going backwards. And I don't think we're going to see a contraction in economic activity. We're not going to see a lot of lost jobs and very significant increase in unemployment. But we are going to see very slow, painfully slow, no, no growth you know, over the course of the, of the next uh, few quarters. That feels more like a slow session, not, not a recession. You referenced what you see uh, coming in, in inflation in terms of services we're, when we're talking about shelter and rent. But what do you see in the housing market right now? And how concerned are you about something breaking, given how lagging that data is? Yeah, well, Dave, you know, uh, the, the uh, housing market, obviously, the single family housing market is the most interest rate sensitive sector of the economy. The Fed's raising interest rates aggressively to try to slow the economy. So it's not at all surprising that single family housing, the most rate sensitive sector of the economy would take it on the chin. And it is in recession. It is, you know, dem demand is down, home sales are down, uh, home building is starting to, to weaken. And of course, house prices have rolled over. So I would expect more of that here over the course of 2023 and 2024. I think it's gonna be, well, take a while and some meaningful price declines uh, to restore affordability in that market, given where I think mortgage rates are going to land over the course of the next year or two. So housing is, is going to take it on the chin. I, I don't think, though, it, it's going to crash or it's going to be, you know, break, as you say, just just because the, the market is so undersupplied, the, the entire housing market, single and multifamily vacancy rates across the housing stock are pretty close to record lows. And that puts a nice floor uh, under prices. Uh, and also, the lending that's been done, the mortgage lending that's been done since the financial crisis because of the reforms after the crisis and that crash mean that uh, the borrowers are, are pretty good borrowers and they have you know high quality, plain vanilla, 30 year, 15 year plain uh, straight up mortgages, nothing fancy, nothing complex. And so it feels like you know we're going to see a correction in the housing market and that's the script. But but uh, I, I don't think a crash is very likely. Well, I know in an hour you're going to be watching our real estate special in case you didn't have your, uh, your, your plans all set. No. Five seconds. Um, where do you think mortgage rates land, in your words? Are they in the mid fives? Yeah. Yeah. In the long run, they should be five and a half percent. A four percent tenure yield add 1.5 percentage points. Five and a half percent. That's where they should be. Wow. Good guess I had there, Mark. Well, you'll just yeah, check you us it. out in an hour. Real estate special. Mark Zandi, good to see you, sir. Thanks.